Well, I'm glad you phrased it that way, the million dollar question, because I was hoping to make a million. <laughs> uh, but I definitely, as I say, I would go this route again and again and again and again and again. You know, stop me. And again, <laughs> because it was profitable okay. for me. It was, I did not lose. What if writing a book is not just a way to transform the lives of many people, but also a way to create financial freedom and leave a legacy? Wouldn't you want to find out just how to do that? Well, that's what this show is all about. Hi, I'm Henneke Wodkiss, sporter, speaker, coach, author of Podcasts Power and the host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast, inviting you to listen to the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast brought to you by C. Ruth Taylor, best selling in the author and the Caribbean's most trusted voice on entrepreneurship. Tune in for inspiration, information and innovation to write and win with books. Get ready to dominate entrepreneurship. Greetings, entrepreneurs. Welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, C. Ruth Taylor, and this is a program where we give you the roadmap to take charge of your publishing and dominate entrepreneurship. Coming up in today's show, we're going to be having an interview with Garfield Robinson. He holds a BA in theology from the Jamaica Theological Seminary and has been a Bible teacher for over 28 years. He's a discipleship leader at Portmore Gospel Assembly, and he published his debut book, Dare to Ask, 35 Questions from Scripture That Still Matter Today in May 2021. And today he's here to share his experience with us. So welcome to the show, Garfield. Good afternoon, Ruth. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's, it's good pleasure. to finally have this chat. So yeah. let's start with your journey. How did you get into writing or what prompted you to write this book? Well, first of all, it was my, my daughter, Chantel. She was constantly, you know, on me, you know, encouraging me to, to write that, Daddy, you need to write, you need to write. Um, because I'm constantly discussing these questions, questions that people would ask, you know, from time to time. And she would say, why not just put them in a... Um, a collection and then that was encouraged again by my pastor Conrad Reed who you know basically stick me up and said listen you need to get this thing done <laughs> because I was you know constantly procrastinating and and so that was what motivated me to really put it together but the information was basically always there because those questions were actually questions that I have answered um, in the past and are answering still as you know in an everyday situation okay so what we're seeing is that you can write a book based on things you have been discussing for a while and if persons are encouraging you to do it that means that it is a book worth writing and worth pursuing okay so i have on screen there the book we're looking at it on amazon it says, find out what they asked and discover the answers. And uh, we're encouraging you to go there and get this book. But what could those questions be? Can you tell us some of these questions that are in there to ask? How did you go from discussion to putting this book together? The book, it covers a wide range of, of questions. Um, I've, I've, I've read a lot of books deals with answering questions that people are asking about the Bible. So I didn't want to go that route, you know, in answering questions that people are and asking about the Bible. Is the Bible from God? Is, 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 is scripture uh, true? Is, you know, those questions. What I really wanted to answer or, or treat is questions that people were actually asking in scripture. So questions that were asked in scripture, I mean, hundreds you know, of years you know, ago, centuries ago, but are still relevant to today. And because those questions were still being asked, 
in my circles, you know, I figure that, oh, this might be something that would be interesting to others. Questions about, about fear, about, about family, about, about anger, about forgiveness, questions that speak to morality and, and, and worry. So those things are things that people deal with on a day-to-day basis. Um, discouragement, it, it covers a wide range of questions, questions that, that deals with, with, with gratitude and, and greed and, and jealousy. You know, it treats even within the, the Christian um, context that deals with, with service and surrender and things like that, disobedience and deceit, you know, trust and assurance. So we try to cover a wide range of things that people, you know, are concerned with today. Boy, there are so many questions coming to my mind. The first one that would probably come to my mind is a question that Jesus asked. And he asked this question um, in John chapter 21, where he asked the question, what is that to you? He asked, he, the question was asked by Jesus and he asked that question um, of Peter, because what was happening in the context is that Jesus just spoke to Peter about his commitment to follow him, asking him three times, you know, Peter, do you love me more than these? And, 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 and Peter answered, yes. You know, he, he pointed out to Peter, listen, feed my sheep. So he gave Peter a responsibility. He reminded Peter what he was leaving him here to do. Now, Peter looked around and saw as Jesus was walking away, he saw John walking behind Jesus and then said to, to Jesus, so what about him? What is going to happen to him? Because Jesus was just telling Peter by what means he's going to you know, glorify God and, and the way he's going to die in serving him. And, and Peter was now asking, so what about him? So Jesus said, what is that? To you. It, the context there, it presents a situation for us that sometimes we get carried away or we get too taken up with what God is doing with another believer or what God is doing with another person. And we can get distracted that we don't accomplish what God wants us to do, you know, if we continue to focus on that person. And we can probably, you know, begin to complain and, and probably become bad mind to say, how is it that God is doing that for this person and not that for me as well? So much so that the scripture tells us that a rumor was spread in over that situation. The person say, said um, that this person, Jesus said that this person will not die until he comes. When Jesus did not say that, he said, what is that to you? What if I choose to leave him until I come. So it, 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 it proves that we need to stay focused on what God has called us to do. And if we walk in obedience to that, then God will be pleased uh, with us. But, but one of the questions in the early is where the Lord asks Adam, Adam, where are you? Um, the situation, the context there in Genesis was a situation where Adam had disobeyed God and, and, and he heard the Lord coming towards him and, and he and his wife, they hid themselves. And, and the Lord came and the Lord said, Adam, where are you? Now the question there, the, the reason why it is relevant for us today, because we know that the Lord is omniscient. So he knows all things. <laughs> it, it was not something to, to discover Adam's location, but rather to reveal his condition that he was in a state now that he was fearing and running and hiding from God because um, he has sinned against God. And, and funny enough, from that day until now, man has been running away from God. <laughs> and the Lord is still asking us to be in our context, even different from that situation. Where are you for husbands who are missing in the home? Where are you for people who are in, 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 in even in the church um, that are supposed to play in their role in accomplishing God's purpose and they're missing I mean they're present in the building but missing as far as their function is concerned and the Lord is also asking where are you
love it. It sounds like <laughs> these are questions you could preach from. It sounds like these are questions that you could have as a good Bible study tool. And it sounds like questions that can use to trigger spiritual conversations. Like even now in the pandemic, the, the, the question is, where are you? Where are you in your personal life? Where are you mentally? And then you could use that as a bridge now to engage persons in spiritual conversations. So my question is, since you have published this book, how have you used it? And how have you seen others use it in their own life or ministry? Talk to us about that. Okay. I'm, I'm happy that you mentioned a while ago how the book can be used. In the book, every question, there are 35 questions. And in, at the end of each question, there are also five. There, there, there are added five questions for contemplation, for discussion. There are discussion starters, you know, um, where there are conversation starters. So, so I know of a couple of persons who are actually using the book now um, in, for, for group Bible study, which was one of the purposes for writing the book and for doing it like this. As a matter of fact, there are some persons who challenge me that each of the questions the, 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 the discussion questions could be used in another book, <laughs> could be used in another book for a separate um, um, discussion, which would be a, a lot, because remember that would be added to what, 175, because five times 35, you know all that is, which is too much, which is not the purpose. My purpose was to give those questions those added questions so that person will be able to use them to start a discussion, to start a conversation and not give the answers in the book to those questions so that persons could grow, you know, get, my aim is to point people to get back to the Bible, you know? So I think it is accomplishing that for some. So let me ask you then, since you've written this book, do you find that you get more invitations to speak? What has this book done for you personally or, and in terms of your own ministry since it has been published? How has your life changed okay. because of the book? Well, definitely, without a doubt, <laughs> why books, whenever you're writing it opens door for you, um, definitely. Um, there are a lot of persons who wanted me to come and share at some events which are not necessarily my um, type of events, but it, it allowed me so other opportunities that I wouldn't have ordinarily, right? As a teacher or preacher, I would usually get opportunities, you know, to go and speak various places and churches but this has added to that where i'm allowed to go and be in some circles that ordinarily i wouldn't get the opportunity to go and share and to speak with these people so it definitely opens door um the book does awesome i love that a book opens doors it gives you wings and the reason why i love books I say that a book is the perfect spark to get the fire going in your ministry, personal or professional life, or to amplify that which already exists. And you are proving that. So just before we bring this interview to a close, Garfield, I want you to talk to us about your publishing process. You are a member of the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. <laughs> Why did you join the academy and how did that uh, program the membership group help you in uh, your publishing process how did you find that journey well before i speak to how i found the journey uh, or the journey was for me dr black dr damon black was the the, the, the person who recommended the, the group to me um and he suggested that listen ruth if there's somebody that you want to help to guide you through this process Ruth Taylor is the person. And since I already <laughs> knew Ruth Taylor 
I mean, I, I, I was so excited to know that I could get help there. And, and as he said, it was, oh, it was a dream come true. It was a wonderful experience. I mean, when you talk about information, there was information galore, information that was prepackaged and, and, and set up for us to just go through and the information was, was always there. And it was not in a kind of, it was communicated in language that we can all appreciate. You know, it not in this high polluted thing. It was, you know, down to earth, clear. Not only that, the, the, the process itself was not just easy, easy in the sense that, you know, understandable and, and so on, but easy in the sense that it was very much economical. <laughs> it was very economical. It was very effective, you know? One of the things I really appreciated about the, 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 the process is the group. The group? Yeah, the group. The group, when, when we had those classes, you know, that we could come and a group that really bonded together and was really helping each other. I especially like the, the question and answer sessions because um, that's where we get a lot of the, the, the things that we were thinking about or that we are thinking about. Because, you know, sometimes we, the information is there, set up before, but when you're actually in the session and hear persons really, you know, explaining it, it gives more, more better understanding sometimes, you know? So that was, that was uh, wonderful for me. The question and answer sessions, the monthly, meetings was wonderful for me. The personal coaching sessions with Ruth Taylor was wonderful for me because even when in the group and because I'm not very talkative, well, you wouldn't know that if you see me in church, but outside of church, I'm not very talkative. So sometimes in the group, some of the things that, that I probably didn't get completely or fully you know, was, was, was further explained and clarified in those personal sessions. Trust me, I, 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 recommend, I, I have recommended, um, but I will continue to recommend it because trust me, it, 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 it is a wonderful experience. Thank you, Garfield. I'm glad you found it. And our aim is to provide expert guidance in a supportive community. So rather than you going and take an expensive publishing package or trying to do it all on your own and making costly mistakes, we're saying here is an intimate setting. It's not too big. We are able to give you the same information that you need. Some pre-package, we have a library of resources. Then we have the community yeah. support where you can pitch your ideas. We have a monthly Q&A and then &A, that personal session. And you have unlimited email access. And you were able to, I think you joined in January and by May. Yes your book was yes. published. Yes, now, was. I want to thank you. And your book also made it to the Amazon bestsellers chart for one of its categories. So congratulations. Thank you. And so we know that everything has its challenges. So we don't yes. want to, to, to paint a picture that maybe there were no challenges along the, the process. You're sure. a first time author. So yeah. I want you to talk to the first time authors. Tell us what are some of the challenges that you face in the process, the entire process from writing to selling the book to launching the book and then provide them with some tips. In other words, what can you do to ensure that uh, the process goes very well for you if you're a first time author. Speak to us about any challenges you had and then give them some tips to bear in mind as a first time author. Okay. Well, uh, for me, the most, the most challenging part for me are what I would say I probably, when my next book comes out, because I'm, I'll just say, use this opportunity to say that very soon, um, I hope to publish my book, Dare to Contend. Yeah, Dare to Contend. So uh, we'll hear more about that in the near future. But there are some things that I learned from um, Dare to Ask that I 
hopefully will not repeat. And, and as it pertains to the launch or the preparation for the launch, remember one of the things that I did was the launch was done before the books were here. And um, even though for some people that that's okay, uh, for me, it did not prove to be okay because a lot of persons were disappointed. A lot of persons came, I mean, because they were anxiously waiting for the book. And because the book took some time, I mean, more than I thought it, it, it would, to, to come, the amount of persons who expressed interest at the time of the launch who wanted to buy book, almost clamoring for books then, it, the, 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 the excitement died down a little bit. So one of, one of the points there is that I would recommend that persons, you know, have your books first. That is my view. Have your books first before you have your launch because for, for, for most people, they, they go to the launch and hopefully to have their books there to get your signing and, and so on. Another thing um, that I learned or probably hope to do better is, is using um, my influencers better I, I, or, or more, because I have a lot of influencers. I am in a circle that I, I know a lot of persons who have influence. And I just didn't use enough people who have influence to really move the books, to promote the books and so on. And I'm saying, if it is that person, promotion is key. That's the point I'm making. It doesn't matter how good the book is. If, if it doesn't get the kind of promotion that it deserves, then it's going to stay on the shelf or stay at Amazon or wherever, wherever it is, right? So promotion is key. The, the, the key also is working with a good team. This is not a one-man show. It's not, you know, and I, I learned that a little late, but I learned, I, I was told this by Ruth Taylor <laughs> in the beginning that teamwork is what makes the dream work. But a lot of times, you know, you want to accomplish some things on your own, but this is not one of the areas that you want to do on your own. You need a team to get it done very well. Another thing, podcasts and you know interviews, those things do help. The thing is that I did not do any podcast. I did not do any interview. I basically just depended on the churches, like the churches within my organization and outside my organization, because a lot of pastors know me or a lot of People know me and they would invite me from time to time. That alone is not good enough to move your books. So don't do like me. It doesn't matter how many people you know. You want to get your books in the hands of people that you don't know or who don't know you. Right. And, and so I learned a bit from, from that. And one last thing, um, make sure you keep in touch with, with your buyers. If you keep in touch with the people who who are getting the books. I mean, that traction, it goes a far way. So I've learned a bit, you know, from some of my mistakes and I'm hoping that people will not do those things that I've done. Thank you, Garfield. You can now turn a, a book coach, man. <laughs> those are excellent sure observations. That. But I just want to encourage you, your book lifespan does not end with the launch. So some of the very things that you're talking about now, using the influencers, getting more podcasts, continue to do those. What you need to do is to have your strategic plan and continue the life cycle of the book. So each month you can be doing something. And I need to say that to authors because very often you rush the pro process and it's as if you are putting everything on just the launch. No, you just gave birth to your baby. The launch is a christening. The announcement to the world that my book is here. Now you have to grow up the baby and, and, and mature it. So give your book at least a three-year life cycle and 
plan activities around it, even if you're coming up with another book. So I just want to encourage you, all is not lost. Some of the very same things that you have pointed out, you can continue that process because the book is still good. The mission of the book is still there. And I want to congratulate you in terms of, I hear a series coming up because you've moved from dear to ask to dear to contend. And I believe what can happen is that the new book will help to sell the, the, the old book or the first book. And, and so I want to encourage you in that. All right. So one of the million dollar question is this Garfield. It is said that 95% of authors lose on their first book, especially those who are publishing independently and they are paying to publish like what we do. So did you lose um, with this book? Did you at least break even or see any kind of profit from the um the process well i'm glad you phrased it that way the million dollar question because i was hoping to make a million <laughs> uh, but i definitely as i say i would go this route again and again and again and again and again you know stop me and again <laughs> because it was profitable okay. for me it was i did not lose and, and with what I have accomplished through this process, I did not just get a book in my hand. I've learned a lot as it pertains to, you know, how to really not just market my book, but how to, to earn from the book and to how to help people, how, which group to target. So, so this route, trust me, this, 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 this was wonderful. And I will continue to, to talk about it. I recommend it whenever I get the chance. It was awesome. indeed possible. Awesome. So thank you for coming and sharing with us, um, Garfield. Having heard that, the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy is open for enrollment from January 12 to 25, just a short window. It's a small, intimate group. We have a two semester curriculum. We want you to publish your book within the first four months or within six months. So you don't have to stay for the entire year. And so you can check the links in the show note for Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. Yes, join us for the next <laughs> registration period, which begins on the 12th of January and ends on the 25th. So Garfield, for persons who want to contact you to come and have these discussions, you see? <laughs> for persons who want to contact you and find out more about you, what you do and how to get the book, where can we get that information? Well, I, I normally have books um and they can also get it from amazon um my email address is uh, robinson garfield 15 at gmail um, dot com. you know persons can contact me those who are not going to go to amazon they can contact me and i can try to get the book to you you know okay i'm tamara francis educator and editor don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share the podcast with your network. If you'd like to increase your impact and income with books, visit authorpreneursecrets.com for more resources, including the books, Pen It to Win It, and Authorpreneur Secrets. Join the Authorpreneur Secrets Academy membership group for courses, coaching, and community support to write, publish, and win with books. Enrollment is in January and June each year. You may also sign up for one of Ruth's Publishing Made Easy courses or private coaching to write and publish your next book. Until next time, go pen it to win it.